Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to be responding to a request. I feel like it's been a while since I've done that. And I had a request for a watercolor flamingo. So today I'm going to show you how to draw a flamingo and also how to paint it using watercolors. I'm also going to be using ink in this watercolor illustration. You don't have to use the ink, it's totally optional. If you're just beginning, I will break this down into simple steps. We'll draw it together and then we will paint it in using our watercolors. We'll paint it in light to dark, and then we will add our details very last and a simple background. These are the supplies that you need. You need watercolor paper, watercolor paints, a container filled with water, a paintbrush, and I'm using a round paintbrush that comes to a nice fine point. This is a number four, but I like to use a number eight, six, eight, ten round brush. Use what you have. You need a pencil and an eraser a paper towel, a scratch piece of paper for you to test your colors out on. And I'm going to be using this Micron pen. So this is a Pigma Micron pen and it is a 01, so it has a really fine point. Let's get started. Before we set up our watercolors, let's go ahead and draw this. The first thing we're going to do is sketch our flamingo. I was able to go to an aviary a few weeks ago and they had some beautiful pink flamingos. And so this is the photograph that I was able to take while I was there. And I thought this one would be perfect to draw because it's a really nice silhouette of a flamingo. It doesn't have the classic S curve in the neck like this one back here does. So you can, if you wanna add that in, you can totally add it in as we're drawing. So this one's a little bit more um, straight instead of curved. Also something that would be helpful before we start this is to look at the artwork of the artist, John James Audubon. His American Flamingo is incredible. So look at the details of it. Above the image of the Flamingo, he has sketches of the beak, of the webbed feet, and also I really love the eye on that Flamingo. So I might be trying to use that eye a little bit in this sketch. So let's sketch this Flamingo. And again, I'm going to show you the basics, but feel free to do your own thing. We want to make sure that we fit the legs and the full neck of the Flamingo in. So the legs are almost as long as the rest of the body. So find kind of the middle of your paper and then just come down a little bit and make a little indication. That's where we're going to start the body and now we're going to try to make sure that we can fit the feet below this. Also put a line through the middle of your paper vertically so we know that the body needs to be on this side. That makes sense. So draw your circle kind of on the left side of your paper. So just kind of sketch a, a circle in for that part of that body and then of course the body's going to come into a little bit of a point. So you can just add almost like a little egg shape on the end or a, a, a little gumdrop shape here. And then on this side, it's actually going to drop down and come off this edge and just draw a triangle in this direction. So this will be the tail and this will be the neck. You can draw the neck a few different ways. In the photograph that I took, the neck is kind of coming a little bit forward in this direction. However, the classic flamingo look has this nice S curve in the neck. And so so that's what I'm going to draw for this illustration. That's the nice thing with illustrating is you can change things. It doesn't have to look like the photograph. So to draw that in, I'm just going to draw an S shape right here. So I'm starting at the top and then curving. So you have this S right here. Also, another tip is to make sure you're drawing this part fairly lightly so you don't need to erase a lot. And then we're just going to draw another circle up here for the head and then for the beak. So the first thing you wanna do is just draw a box coming off the nose. I drew it a little bit too big. And then from that box, we're gonna draw a line coming diagonally towards the flamingo and then bring it up and just kind of curve it back into that box. So we're almost creating a triangle here that's just connected by this shape that's in here. And you can curve this back a little bit more if you'd like. You can change these angles to be whatever you think they should be. And then the line for the mouth is going to be inside of here. We can do that a little bit later. I'm just gonna draw a little triangle right here where this comes in so that we can tell where the eye is. And the eye comes above this point, back and up. I'm going to draw a circle. And then we can refine the shape of the head a little bit more and make it a little bit smoother as it comes into the beak and also right here. And we'll sketch in these wings in just a second. Let's put these legs in and make sure that we can fit it. So in this circle shape, try to find the center and your first leg is going to come a little bit forward from this center part. So we're just going to draw two half circles or little gumdrops upside down right here and then one that's a little bit shorter behind it. And this is the area the legs are coming from. And they're really thin, almost like sticks. If this is about the size of this, we know that the legs are gonna come down to at least here. Kind of indicate where your legs are gonna be coming down to. And then there's almost a ball where their knees would be or where this joint is where the leg comes forward. And then just curve. Oh, let's just call it a tube. We're gonna draw these two lines that are parallel to each other to indicate where that leg is. And you can draw a triangle here their webbed feet. 
So there's really like three areas that we can see. It's one, two, three. So it's almost like you're drawing a W, number three, sideways here. And we really can't see many details here. So I'm just gonna indicate that there would be some lines. This next knee is about here. This leg also comes forward just a little bit. And then we're just going to draw that W shape, indicating that foot. It should be about as long as this one. So it's a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna make it so it feels like not quite so short and then maybe shorten this one up just a little bit. They should be fairly similar to each other. So if one's a little bit longer, you can shorten it up a little bit. All right, now let's sketch in some of these details for the wings. So starting about right here where our circle hits this part, we're going to start this big section for this upper wing. So we can just indicate that there's going to be this big wing section in here. And then starting here is this tail section right here. So in here we have some feathers that are really bright pink. And then these ones are the pale pink that are on top. And so to indicate these feathers, we're just going to draw almost like these leaf shapes in here that are pointing towards the back until they get to about this tail and then they start to curve down and kind of over it because this is coming out from there and then as we get up here they start to get really fine and small and I don't know why they remind me of a hat but almost like hair or like grass and we can bring a line down through the middle here let me erase some of my lines I used to draw this with so you can see some of the feathers just a little bit better and then in this area we're going to draw two main feathers that are coming out and they're about the same length and then we have these light pink feathers that are coming under. They're about the same color as these small pieces that are coming down. And then these bright pink feathers continue to tuck under these light pink feathers. And there is a little area of black under here on some of these swans. And we do want to keep it, I think we want to add it to this just so we can see it. So I'm just putting a line in here underneath these feathers to show where that dark black layer is. So if you're using a pen, now is a good time to draw over the lines that you wanna keep. If you're just using pencil, you might want to erase any of the lines you used to sketch it with. If you wanna do that, it's totally optional. And this is also a time to make any corrections that you might need to make. All right, once we've sketched those in, before we erase any of these other lines, let's put in a few details that we might want to have for when we start watercoloring. So let's go ahead and put in this line where the beak opens up. And let's also indicate the black part in the eye. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of it white for a highlight. And also we need to include a nostril somewhere up in here. And then on the legs, you can add some detail for the webbing that's down here on the feet and also for the texture that would be back here on the legs. If you look at John James Audubon's American Flamingo, he has these really great, this great texture that's in the legs that he's added with these really thin lines. So you can add those if you would like. And again, you could add these in pencil, you could add them in pen. It depends on how you're going to finish it and color it in. All right, those of you who are using pen, go ahead and erase your pencil lines. Those of you using pencil, you can erase uh, any lines that you don't want to use. And you could paint this in as simply, or you could make it as detailed as you would like. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple for this tutorial, but if you're new to watercolor, go ahead and just paint it in pink. You don't add this little black part right here. I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of shading. All right, so get set up. If you're right-handed, go ahead and set up on the right side of your paper. If you're left-handed, set everything up on the left side. You need your watercolors, your water. You need a paper towel. I don't know where mine went, so I'll just use this one. A scratch piece of paper for testing out your colors. And then your paintbrush. So the first thing we're going to do is paint in this light pink area, which is really, really light in my photograph. You could definitely make it darker if you want this to be more illustrative and fun. So the first thing we do, and this is the first thing we do in almost all of our the watercolor tutorials on Mr. Otter Studio, is we're going to make a puddle in our tray. And this is the puddle that we're going to use to paint the whole flamingo in. Maybe I'll make it down here closer to the red. The reason we are using a puddle and we're just dropping some water in here is number one, I wanna create a lighter color. Number two, I wanna have enough to cover this whole flamingo in. I don't wanna to have to stop and remix it. So how would we make pink with a set like this? Well, you could just use red with a lot of water and that'll give you a nice pink. So I'll just show you right here. You could add a little bit of purple to it to change the color just a little bit. So you can see how light that is. 
So if you want it darker, you can add a little bit of red. If you want to change the color a little bit to more of a fuchsia color, you could add a little violet to it. You could add a little orange if you want it to be brighter. But I'm just going to add, just add a little bit of red to your puddle so you get this nice light pink. And let's go ahead and paint in the top of this flamingo. So here's a tip if you're just beginning. Don't paint over the same area twice. And I'm going to paint in the legs, the body, everything, even this darker area that I'm going to paint later. And also, I might even paint in the beak with this color. We'll see. The only place I don't want to fill in is the eye. So, Also, if you have a ton of paint on your brush, it might be hard for you to paint in some of these areas that are smaller. So you might wanna just dab your paintbrush on your paper towel to take some of the paint off so that it's easier to paint in some of these smaller areas without having a big puddle that you have to move around that's a little bit harder to control. Just use that tip of your paintbrush to get those little feathers in. And then again, we're painting in these legs as well. Feel free to use different colors. I'm just showing you the colors that I would use and now we want to add a little bit more of a shadow underneath here. So we could wait till this is dry and glaze over it, or while it's wet, we could kind of add that color next to it and see if we can blend it just a little bit. So to make this a little bit darker, we could add, of course, we could add a little bit of black to it. We could add a little bit of green to it, but that might turn it just a little bit brown. You could add just more red to it and make it a deeper pink. I'm going to add, I usually don't paint with black, but I'm going to add just a little bit of black to it and maybe a little bit more red. This is much darker than my first color. You can see it next to it. Take that darker color, and again, it could just be a little bit more red, it could be a little bit more black, and let's add some of these shadows. So the sun is coming from this direction, so the shadows are going to be on this side and definitely on the legs. Pretty much the whole legs, except for the top of the feet, are going to have a pretty significant shadow. Let's start here with the neck. And so we're just gonna paint this front side and just bring that whole shape underneath here underneath these wings and onto the leg. And you can smooth this shadow out if you want by rinsing your brush off, blot it off, and then just very carefully going along the edge. Okay, and then take that same dark color and let's go ahead and put a shadow on these legs. And then with the head, get that same dark color and I'm just going to come in this area around the beak where it's kind of tipped down. But I'm gonna leave the beak light and just paint in the feathers and I'm just coming around it with a brush that I've dipped in my water and dried off on my paper towel. Just touch the edges and make it a little bit more gradual. So grab your shadow color. Even if you use the same color, it's probably going to add a little bit of a shadow anyway. And then let's just put some shadows on some of these feathers, maybe through here since this kind of dips in just a little bit and paint in some of these areas in here. All right, so we've put some pink on here. Let's add these darker areas on the, I'll just call it the knees. I'm going to get red with a little bit of black. Black is super powerful, so make sure you don't add too much. So just grab a little red with a little black and we're going to put some of these shapes in right here. So these, I'm just gonna call them the knees, but I don't think that's what they really are. So I'm just gonna paint in that whole area. It's definitely a different color than the, the rest of my flamingo. All right, now let's work with this bright pink feather that's going to be right here. We're going to create a puddle. It doesn't need to be very big because we're only painting in these two feathers. Maybe just a teeny bit in here. You want to add red and maybe a little yellow to it or orange to make it bright. Compared to the pink we had before, this is what that looks like. It kind of looks a little darker now. We want it to look brighter, so I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to it. But I don't want it to be completely orange. So now I've added a little more red and a little more orange and I've got this really bright color. That looks that looks pretty good. So grab that brighter color and let's go ahead and paint in these feathers. And this one actually has a highlight right there. So what I'm going to do is paint this part in. Rinse your brush off, blot it off on a paper towel, and then just come along that edge and smooth it out. So it just gets a little bit lighter at the top. And that same color kind of continues on through here above this black area that we're going to paint in. So let that dry just a little bit and let's work on some of our details. So now we need some black. I would just indicate there's a line right here and then paint it in. When you're painting in details, you don't wanna have a lot of paint on there or it gets really hard to control. And since we have that black, let's just move to this small little area here. Pick up that black and just paint it in. And again, you can make this brighter, you can make it lighter, darker. And then let's paint in this last little detail, the eye. And you can see all of my pencil marks underneath. I wish I would've used a lighter pencil and not pressed as hard. So this is gonna be a really small little detail. For the eye, we're gonna make a tiny little puddle, dip in our blue. You can make it green, you can paint the eye whatever color. I'm gonna choose blue, do it with. Get your test piece of paper, see what it looks like. 
and then go ahead and paint it in. I always touch my paper towel with my brush to get some of the paint off when I'm painting in a little detail. So use your paper towel and then I just want to leave a little white in there. So I'm just going around the edges. And if it's so light, you probably can't see my white highlight. So I'm going to make it just a tiny bit darker so that that highlight stands out. Now the hard part is figuring out what you want to do for the background. If you want to just keep it this way, if you want to fill it in with one color or two colors and make it really simple, um, I'm just going to add a blue background. So go ahead and make a big humongous puddle this time. And I'm going to do more of a loose background. You could use tape to tape a square border if you wanted to. I'm just going to make this one a little bit looser and I might add just a little bit of red to this. Okay, that was way too much and I made purple. So let's add more blue. So it looks really dark there, but when I paint it on my test paper, it's fairly light. Mix up your background color and then go ahead and paint it in. Just make sure when you paint around the flamingo, touch your paper towel with your paintbrush and kind of soak up a little bit of that paint so that you can get in those details and not worry about not being able to control where the watercolor goes. And I'm just gonna start up here. And again, you can add like a cool edge. I'm just gonna do, I don't know, just a simple, and all I'm going to do after this starts to dry is just paint another darker area on the very bottom. And that's it. So after this blue puddle dries, just add a little bit more on the bottom to create kind of a shadow underneath the flamingo. Sign it and you are finished. Thank you so much for joining me today on Mr. Otter Studio. I hope you learned how to draw and paint a flamingo in watercolor using ink if you decided to do that. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials. And also we love hearing your requests. It gives us a ton of ideas of what we're going to create next. Have a wonderful day.